Welcome to the short film show for the Reynolds Film Fest YouTube channel. In this episode we're going to talk about The Dylan's Room, a short film that has been seen in several film festivals all around the world, winning a lot of awards, and we're going to meet the writer and director Lake Anderson. Welcome to the Raindance YouTube channel. We're here with Lake and Anderson, the director of uh, Dylan's Room, who participates to Raindance Film Festival. Can you tell me something about your movie? It's a, it's more of a, whereas a short film is generally a story, this is more of a trip. It's an experience um, with one character um, about isolation and grieving and closure in the situation of this of this character who's coming to terms with the loss of her son and she's she's doing this by exploring his bedroom uh shortly after he's he's passed away and coming to terms with with aspects of of their relationship that they perhaps hadn't talked about while he was while he was living and uh in exploring his bedroom she f she finds his personal things and she, one of the things she finds is his, his stash of drugs. She, um, I, I guess, I guess does what anyone in that situation may do. And, and it was the choice I made that she, she chooses to get obliterated, you know, get stoned. And in, uh, in doing this, she connects with his spirit and they're able to come together and, you know, fix a few things that perhaps they hadn't been able to do while he was alive. How did you come up with this story? Did you write the story as well? Yes, it was it originally it was two stories that I was developing, two separate short stories, and one of them was was weaker than the other one and was missing something. The other one was overcomplicated in a way. It was very very grand, very big, the scale of it, but um, but the essence of what was going on was very very intimate. And I thought, how about placing everything in one room, working around budget, um. I realized I had limited budget and I thought, okay, uh, I'm gonna f we'll stick to one location and, um, and bring both these stories together. And they, they managed to fit together very well and create this story, which, um, which I wrote um, several drafts of, making it, making it work. That's, that's, that's where it led us. It led us to this, to this sort of basic blueprint script that had a distinct arc to it, an arc for the character and a journey that she could go on. And I thought that's a great sort of journey for an actor. So um, that's how it, that's how it came about. Did you put the money up? I put the money up myself, and um, everyone involved gave whether it was money or time. Everyone was, you know, the team teamwork. Just believe in the project. Exactly, exactly. It was an experiment. It wasn't a, a film with a game plan by any means. It wasn't. I didn't set out to make a film and put it into a festival by any means. I wanted to experiment with this story. And see where that would where, where that would take us, and uh, and it was very limited budget, and everyone, but everyone was treated well. You know, it was it was a bunch of friends getting together over the weekend. You know, two days we had with the actors. So, so how many weekends did you work on it? I worked on it for a year. You know, I worked on it for a year in my head. You know, but um, and then three months of post production, which was which was brilliant because that's very productive time for me. I'm making more decisions, but it was two days with the actors. Luckily, another couple of days we had freedom to go back and, and look at the room and very much focus on the room and aspects of the room because the room is very much the central character of the film in a way. It has a life to it. It has a, a heartbeat at the beginning. It's very cold and isolating in places and it's very, it's very warm as well. I didn't want it to be a completely stark all the way through. And I think developing the aesthetic, the budget, very much helped create the aesthetic because we experimented. We were experimenting, trying things out, trying out new lenses with this camera, the uh, the Canon 5D, mm -hmm. which we shot on, and we had a zoom for the for the audio. So uh, very very focusing much on the sound and isolation silences. The DP um, has also never made a film before. He um, he's a photographer, oh. so he wanted to try something new as well. An experiment, and he was he was more daunted, I think, by the idea of that. But um, is a real perfectionist as a photographer, and I think that's why the film looks as it does. It is it's a very beautiful film, I think, and it has that he has that eye 
to capture things. And um, but I'm 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 very very relaxed about everything. It doesn't have to be perfect. I like it when things aren't too perfect. But he's he's very much atten close attention to detail and everything. So that was a nice collaboration to. Is it you know, your first shot? Yes. As a director. As a, as anything. Yeah. As anything. <laughs> well, not as I mean I did some acting before, but it's my first short. as that's mine. My yeah. my so baby. Yeah. It has been past to the other side of the camera. Yeah. It's um, it's more fulfilling for me, mm -hmm. definitely. So would you like to, to go on doing that? I think so. I mean, I, I, I don't think, I didn't set out to, to, to be a writer or director or anything. I was, I was experimenting with this idea. I very much enjoyed the process from the writing stage through filming, through editing, through the distribution, through film festivals and seeing how it's received. Because that's, that's incredible. I didn't make the film for that purpose and it's, it's, it's a nice experience to see it with an audience. But um, I've seen that you're going to, to take part to several festivals. How could you do it? To what the, the festivals do you yeah. mean? H how? Yeah. I just, I just, I, I, was re I was relentless with where I sent it. Yeah. I sent it to one festival in the States and we had a yes straight away. And I thought, okay, I'm going to put a rest, put aside the rest of what was left over in the budget, you know, for sending it to festivals. And I was, I was, it was a full time job. You know, you have to be very focused and, and also research the festivals and the kind of films they show and what they're looking for. And sometimes you, you expect it to get in somewhere where it doesn't. In some places you're taken by surprise, you know. So it's, 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 it's got something for everyone, but it doesn't speak to everyone. It's not for everyone. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a lot there that people can relate to. Maybe people that um, have suffered a loss in some way. What, how was your experience in Raindon's Film Festival? It was very positive. I mean, I've, as you know, I've I've been here before um, as a spectator, and I helped out with the the documentary that uh, Jonathan Coet made a few years ago. Um, so I've always been coming. Many of my friends are associated in some way to the festival. So it was it felt natural to to have the London premiere here, definitely. So it was a, a very positive experience. What kind of feedback you received from the film festivals you've been? Um, I went to one in Italy, and it was it was so so. I had no idea. Um, it was subtitled in Italian and I, I, I don't know if they got it or not. Maybe it was the screening conditions. It wasn't ideal, mm -hmm. but um, it was crazy because it was playing the same night in two festivals simultaneously. It was in Italy and it was in Cambridge. I was very, uh, I was very happy to get into Cambridge, but I wasn't expecting to get into Cambridge because I mean, I applied because I saw that Andrew Arnold's film Wasp had screened there and I loved that film and I thought, okay, I'm going to send it to Cambridge. It's, it's local, but it was playing on the same day is Italy so I thought well I'll go to Italy because it's a smaller festival and maybe it'll be better it'll be received more warmly or something but but there was something missing there and I was I, I regretted not going to Cambridge when when we won because we won best short film in Cambridge and I, I didn't expect it I, at, at all you know it was an audience award which you know can't get any better than that really it's so it it, it spoke to people and but I was surprised as well because it was a very late screening it was we screened very late in the evening at Cambridge but um yeah, I was, I was blown away by that reaction. And um, also the, the Isle of Wight Film Festival, which is fairly new, and it's just great, great atmosphere. You know, this, um, in sort of this sports hall with all this light coming in, and this, everyone sitting on sofas, and very, very, very indie. And um, that was the first time I saw it with an audience. And uh, it was like watching it new, in a way, because you're experiencing it through them. And the reaction there was very positive. But then there's been times when I've applied to a film festival and thought it was perfect, a perfect fit, but of course not. And so you, you don't know what to expect. You get, an, you get a, an expectation based on what people think of it. But um, it, it's, it's, it's a film that's very much on the fence in a way. It's not making any statements. It's very soft. It's not, it's not a strong message. It's an experience. So... Um, you need to go with it, you need to flow with it and have patience, otherwise you are going to find it slow, perhaps. But they're the kind of films I like as well, they're films where they have, you have to look a bit deeper, you know, films that make you work, I think are a little more interesting for me than just, you know, I like to be entertained as well, and there's plenty of short films that are entertaining. Uh, Bear, I saw this film Bear, which was fantastic, very funny, but, you know, a short movie, but um, and maybe I'll try something like that one day, you know. <laughs> But I'm enjoying this part at the moment, the, 
subtle and quiet. And Is there any particular moment you're very proud of your movie? The whole thing, but <laughs> <laughs> of course. But, um, but no, I'm I, I love it. But um, I'm very proud of of my actors and everything that they did in the film that they came up with on their own, and also that I made them do that perhaps they they would have done but they, they they're out of their comfort zone maybe I mean Joanna Scanlon playing um, Penny the lead I mean you know incredible to have her on board I've worked with her before um, and she's um, she's wonderful but she she's not a smoker at all so and she had a very bad cold and we did this extremely long take which is cut down and it's a shame we cut it down because I can watch it in the rushes on its own just her on her own for ages and it's it's amazing she um she did very well with just 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 smoking just that shot of her smoking i'm just i'm entranced by it i mean she does these little things the way she touches her hair and all that kind of thing and her smile and, and ricky as well i mean he's he's a natural complete natural i didn't even audition him i knew he was perfect i knew he and joanna would would gel because i knew what she was like i knew what he was like it was it was believable so i love i love the relationship i love watching their relationship i think it's genuine and it's um it's not you know it's it's the writing as well but it's it's them they they did so much on their own as well did you do any kind of rehearsal with them no not so i i i don't really like rehearsing too much i like discovering maybe um we discussed things before i discussed um at length with both of them before they even met. They met on the day of filming, which I thought would be a good idea rather than having them overthink it or over, you know, I wanted it to be very raw, very fresh. Uh, there was no rehearsal. I, I like to shoot the rehearsal. Well, on this one, I you know. <laughs> um, I wanted to shoot the rehearsals. I wanted to s capture things that might be a bit awkward because mm -hmm. I like that and then change, if you change things, you know, and also we're filming on digital so we don't have to block everything it was very the only thing we really rehearsed was the one shot which is um the initial contact between them she's holding this this spliff and his hand comes up and takes it and we did maybe six takes because it was then panning down to his face and it was it was very complicated that was probably the only thing that i was i see it this way and i want it i want it this way and but everything else you know not rehearsal at all even the camera wasn't rehearsal. he was moving as he wanted to move, which uh, which was very good for for the um, for the edit, it gave us a lot of coverage. Could you give us any suggestion or advice to young directors or young producer or actors as well? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still looking for advice myself, actually. You know, um, if you believe in something, to to go with it, completely go with it, and trust your gut instincts, and. Um, it's it's good it's good to it's good to make films it's good to experiment but um but don't get disheartened if it doesn't work out the first time remember it's experimenting you know i was very fortunate i mean this is my first short film but i i, I was picking up a camera as a child and filming all kinds of things you know editing in camera as well always experimenting i think that's the the key to to enjoying it you have to you have to enjoy it the second you stop enjoying something you know stop it it's not for you maybe maybe don't make a film for the sake of making a film making a film when you have a a message to say it's going to be it's going to be more clear and it's going to be more clear for your whole crew and everyone working working because you can translate that message translate that message across you know mm -hmm. have you got any um youtube channel or facebook or any yeah. website um I'm, I'm really bad at social media until recently i realized i had to get on board for this to promote the film because there's no one else to do it with independent film you have to do it yourself so i've only just joined twitter it's some um, l cricket films um little cricket films because of the cricket that walks across the poster in the film and mm -hmm. it seemed fitting you know it was that was nice um so yeah littlecricketfilms.com facebook.com forward slash dylan's room film uh, <laughs> um, it's weird doing all that stuff but it's really nice when you get messages from people in you know, around the world like I had two people in Costa Rica the other day send emails which I, was, I, just, I had no idea it was playing in Costa Rica you know it was the the Schnitt festival which distributes all over the place but um yeah still getting used to the whole social media thing all right thanks a lot no worries thank you mm -hmm. hope you enjoyed the interview and if you missed the previous one Click here and please subscribe the channel. If you got any comment to do, do it here.
And if you've done recently any short movie, get in touch. We'd love to hear from you. See you next time.